Dutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Space Station. Clutch! Clutch! He won! That's great. I knew he would. Paddlefoot beat all the other dogs. It says that Paddlefoot has an IQ of K-9, one point higher than the next closest dog. So he's been selected to make a trip in the space and return. Golly, Paddlefoot, are we proud of you. Paddlefoot passed the difficult test with flying colors. For instance, even in the correct button-pushing test, his score was 100%. And in the final test, set in the maze, where he had to figure out which door led to the reward, Paddlefoot went straight to the objective, demonstrating amazing dog sense. The space flight is scheduled for dawn tomorrow. And we'll be there, eh, Paddlefoot? Wow! Wow! With a few last-minute adjustments, Paddlefoot is placed in the nose cone of a huge rocket. All the instruments are in working order. I don't see how we can fail. Besides, with the recordings of your voice giving Paddlefoot instruction, Spinner, he can't miss. That was a smart idea, Professor. Paddlefoot will do whatever his master commands. My assistant, Dr. Hogenreiter, will be in charge of playing the records by remote control. All preliminary tests are complete. Operation Arkark is about to begin. Golly, it won't be long now. Take this microphone spinner and say so long to Paddlefoot. We're sure proud of you, Paddlefoot. And be sure to mind the instructions. We'll be right here waiting when you get back. So long. Perfect takeoff. Now we go into my rocket tracking laboratory. The rocket is now 300 miles above Earth. It will be outside the Earth's atmosphere in seven minutes. Now, Paddlefoot, be calm. The first stage is about to drop off. When I say go, push the red button at the right. Get ready? Go! Everything is going according to plan. Paddlefoot will be in orbit any minute now circling the Earth at 18,000 miles an hour. Here is an important announcement. The nose cone carrying the intrepid space dog Paddlefoot is now in orbit. He will circle the Earth once every hour. And here is the last picture taken of this heroic dog before he boarded his spaceship. Golly, isn't he brave, Clutch? There he goes, a thousand miles overhead. We will receive reports from other tracking stations as he makes the orbit. Hello? Who? Tracking station Y? Yes? What is that? You don't? Oh, my! What is it, Professor? Something wrong? It's Paddlefoot. The signal was loud and clear. Then suddenly the signal stopped. Then that means Paddlefoot's... I am afraid, though, Paddlefoot is lost. Is Paddlefoot really lost? Will they find him? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Space Station. You remember last time, Paddlefoot had won the space tests for dogs. He had started a trip into space and returned, after orbiting only once. The signal was loud and clear. Then suddenly the signal stopped. Then that means Paddlefoot. I'm afraid so. Paddlefoot is lost. But Clutch, we gotta find him. Poor Paddlefoot, way out there in outer space, all alone. We'll find him, Spinner. Professor Knockwurst, do you have any more rockets available? Many of them, Clutch. We always have a few spares ready to go. Good. Spinner and I are ready to blast off immediately. Spinner and you? What about me and my assistant? You mean you want to go too? You bet. But first, we have to build a space station so we can have a place to refuel our rocket for searching. But, Professor, that will take months to build. 
Nonsense. I have invented a rocket that can be torn down, then put together again to make a complete space station. Come over to the window. I will show you my invention. The middle rocket is for passengers. The other two carry fuel and equipment. Incredible, Professor. Why didn't someone think of that before? Well, who knows? Can we start now? All we must do is blow up the giant balloon that raises the rockets to their starting point, and then off we go. The giant balloon is inflated, the rockets attached, and the rescue party is aboard and ready. Get that. Steady now. Cut ropes. We're off. Now we can only find paddle for it. Here is a news flash. Clutch Cargo and Spinner with Professor Knockwurst and Dr. Hoganweiler have just taken off on their search for the intrepid space dog, Paddlefoot. We are picking up speed. Soon we will blast off. All three rockets are controlled by the buttons and dials in this rocket. Professor, you have a marvelous brain. I know it. Now we are ready to blast off. But, Professor, that balloon is right in front of us. How? <laughs> you watch, Spinner. Now, I will fire up the rockets. Now, we! Right through the balloon! According to my calculations, we're just about ready to stop. You are right, Clutch. We have arrived. Hey, there's nothing here but space. How are you going to build a station way up here? Simple, Spinner. Don't you remember? Out here in space, nothing weighs anything. There's no gravity pull, so we float the space station. Okay, Professor. I've cut the rocket motors. Good. Now our speed is gone, we stop. We are now floating free. Now I push a button, and the two outside rockets open up to form a space station. Now look out the window, and you will see our space platform. Golly, and we can land our rocket right on it for fuel. Next, we set our rocket down and so to work. There are a few bolts to tighten. Okay, if I get out, Clutch? Okay, Spinner, as soon as I've checked your space helmet. Whee, Clutch, let's go floating like a bubble. Clutch and Professor Knockworth work steadily, tightening bolts. There. That's the last one. Clutch! Help! Help! I'm drifting away! Help, Clutch! Save me! Can Clutch save Spinner as he drifts from the space station? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Space Station. Last time, Clutch and company with Professor Knockwurst and Dr. Hoganweiler set out in space with a new type of rocket to set up a space station and search for Paddlefoot. They had arrived when... Knockworth says we must pass through a very dense asteroid belt on our way to Mars. What is an asteroid belt? Floating rocks. Some very big, some small. That were once a planet that exploded. 
Now they float in space in a ring or belt around the planet Mars. The professor has invented a safety device for flying through the asteroids. You better get ready to use it, Clutch. Look! The professor's device works. Here goes. It worked, Clutch! Listen to him hit! That's quite an asteroid shower. Yeah. I think we're out of it now. Listen, no more rocks. It won't be long now, Spinner. We're almost there. Golly, I hope we find Paddlefoot. We've arrived, Spinner. But I think we'll make a few passes to see if anyone lives on Mars. Clutch pushes the rocket 
Corporal Mo Lam as they head for Venus. There she is, Spinner. Venus. We're coming in. What's all that green stuff? Some kind of mist. And it's getting thicker the closer we get in. I'll say it is. It really looks like green pea soup. We'll have to go on special sonar radar, or we might crash into the planet. By golly, we're heading in on something that's made of metal. Hear that beep? Yeah, Coach, but we still can't see anything. I hate to say this, Spinner, but I think we'd better turn back. It's just getting too bad. But Clutch! I know how you feel, Spinner, but... Oh, hey, Clutch, listen! Oh, hear that? It's Cattlefoot! Cattlefoot, he's alive! It's the signal from his nose cone! He's down there somewhere! Is it possible that they found Cattlefoot? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, Space Station. You remember last time, Clutch and Spinner returned from Mars, then started immediately for Venus, still in search of Paddlefoot. A dense green mist surrounded Venus, and as they were about to turn back... Hear that? It's Paddlefoot! Paddlefoot, he's alive! It's the signal from his nose cone! Clutch! These dog barks are getting louder! And look, something's shining over there! It looks like a... Do you suppose... A nose cone? See anything? No, Clutch. Only another window beside our window. It surely does look like a window, but... Look! Somebody's pulling down the shade. That's no shade, Spinner. That's an eyelid. Something huge is looking at us with that monstrous eye. What do you think it is? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Well, if I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't believe it. Look! A big green frog! Oh, look out! Don't act scared. He's going away. Hurry, Clutch, before he comes back. Let's find Paddlefoot. Professor? Ah, yes. For that, I have the answer. My special space-time machine, which I myself invented, for little dogs who get too young while flying in outer space. Now, I just set the timer at normal-sized dog, then... Go ahead, Paddlefoot, go ahead. Presto!
Fargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Operation Moonbeam. Exactly, Spinner. Do you remember Professor Knockwurst? How could I forget him? He gave us our first rocket ride. We're on our way to his desert missile base right now. He wants us to pilot his newest rocket creation in the space race. Rocket space race? Oh, oh, wow, we! Yeah, Spinner. And what's more, it's a space race to the moon. <gasps> to the moon? Meanwhile, at Professor Knockwurst's missile base, we are most fortunate to have secured such a fine crew as Clutch Cargo and Company. Unless we can get them started on the training test today, we'll never get it all finished before rocket race takeoff time. Our rocket must take off on time. There's Professor Knockworth's base just ahead. Fasten your seatbelts for landing. Clutch, look out! It's a plane coming straight at us! No! That idiot almost hit us. No, Spinner, but we made it. There's Professor Knockworth's landing strip. Oh, Clutch! There goes the black jet again! Thank heaven they are here. I am so glad you are here, my friends. I knew I could count on you. Almost didn't make it, Professor. That black jet tried to knock us out of the sky. Oh, dear. Ark, these planes. Too many, they are as sick as fleas on a dog's back. Rockets on space travel, that is the thing now. Oh, but please forgive. Allow me to introduce our rocket team, Clutch Cargo and Spinner, and oh, yes, I almost forgot, Paddlefoot. <laughs> and this is my new assistant, Dr. Mary Hogenweiler. I'm very pleased to meet you all. And so are we, Doctor. Please call me Mary. Mary is a doctor of astrospatio-temporal impermanent rocket relationships. I was most lucky to secure her services. Tell us about the moon race, Professor. Your wire sounded urgent. The motor scooters are waiting to take us to the test station. I shall explain as we go. There are two rocket missile teams competing to get to the moon first. The team which wins this race will get the contract to build the first rocket missile bus for moon commuters. We'll do our best to win, Professor. Is that the rocket we'll be going in, Miss Mary? Yes, Dinner. That's the one you'll be flying in the space race to the moon. Golly, what a whopper! Ah, here we are. This is our test center. Dr. Hogenweiler will be in charge of all the tests. It'll be a pleasure. What are the tests, Dr. Hogenweiler? We're going to put you through all the different things that'll happen to you in your rocket flight, even before you leave the ground. Like the acceleration test in my new supersonic rocket sled, and the anti-gravity room where you will float around as if you didn't weigh nothing. Golly! I can see that's a lot to be done. Let's get started. There's that plane again! He's coming right at us! Hit the deck, everyone. He's going to hit us! Wow! A black jet. Someone's playing for keeps. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, and Operation Moonbeam. You remember last time, Clutch and company had been asked by Professor Knockwurst to fly his rocket in the moon race. They had arrived at the rocket testing grounds and were about to begin their training when the black jet suddenly dove at them. Hit the deck, everyone. He's going to hit us. That guy's really got it in for us. He's turning. Here he comes again. Now, everyone. I'd like to get my hands on that character. Everyone okay? He threw something out of the plane. Yes, I've got it. It's a rock with a message on it. It says, if you want to live, cancel your moon trip. 
Looks like he means it too, Clutch. It'll take more than an anonymous note to stop us now. Come on, Dr. Hoganwater. I... I mean, Mary. Let's get started with the tests. First, Clutch and company are fitted with their new space suits. That's all right, Paddlefoot. That's yourself you're mad at. Now, this is the food you will take with you. Try some. Hear that, Paddlefoot? Want to try a moon meal? It's so concentrated that one little pill makes a whole meal. And now to test you out in my new anti-gravity room. You see, Spinner, after our rocket gets away from the pull of the Earth's gravity, we'll float around inside it like this, unless we're strapped to our seats. Space travelers have to get used to this. <laughs> Look at Paddlefoot. He's swimming. <laughs> but he's not getting anywhere. And now for Professor Knockworth's supersonic rocket sled. It goes from a standing start to five times the speed of sound and back to a full stop. On a track that's only ten miles long. Wow! Everything set, Professor. Are you all ready for the blast off, Clutch? We're all set. Okay, let her go! That was quite a ride. Paddlefoot lost his bark ten miles back. It is now time for the rocket to take off for the space race to the moon. The countdown will start in five minutes. So get in it already. Aye, aye, Professor. Goodbye, my brave friends. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. What now? Are you all comfortable? Yes, Professor. Fine. You will stay on the moon for five days. Be sure to blast off for Earth at the exact time. If you are even a few seconds late, you will miss your landing on Earth and fly back into space to orbit in space forever. Oh! You have 30 seconds before blasting off. Comes now the countdown. Auf Wiedersehen. Five, four, three, two, one. The first flight to the moon. Will Clutch and Company be successful and reach the moon? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo.